Hi, my name's Mike. I'm a ham radio operator and a Mac user. I get asked all the time about software as a Mac user, so today I want to show you my favorite programs that I use for both Mac and iOS, this time on KMRD Radio Stuff. And in no particular order, I want to start off with an app that probably every new ham radio operator is going to want to download uh, pretty much immediately upon getting your first handheld radio. It is called Chirp. And it looks exactly like this. This is a program that allows you to program your handheld radios, whether it's a Bofang, a Yaesu, Icom, just about every radio is supported here. You can enter in the frequency, you can give it a name, you put in your CTCSS tones, uh, your, your plus or minus offset and the shift, your power. Uh, it's just very, very easy, very well made, uh, great layout, works for just about any radio you could ever possibly think of. And uh, it's, it's something I use all the frickin' time when programming new radios. Next, I'm gonna show two programs because they really work in tandem with one another. We're gonna be talking about WSJTX and Grid Tracker. So this box here is the WSJTX along with this box. And this allows you to do digital modes like uh, one of my favorite modes, FT8. You can also do FT4, MSK, Q65, JT65, Hellschreiber, all kinds of stuff. This is also the app that I use or the program when I'm testing antennas to do whisper tests. Uh, it's just a really great bit of kit. You can download it from the, uh, the website. I will leave links for all of these in, in the uh, description below. And a great companion to WSJTX is this program here called Grid Tracker. And the great thing about this, this kind of makes FT8 a little bit more engaging. Uh, as signals start to come in, you'll, you'll see uh, lines of propagation of, of people who are making contacts as well as people who are making contacts with you. Uh, it's really neat, you'll get uh, see, here's a line. Uh, somebody's making a contact now. You'll get these grids filled in as you as you start to work stations across uh, the world, and it's it's really neat. A lot of people are chasing grid squares, and then here you have this call roster where it's gonna basically look for anyone calling CQ, and you can basically just double click them or just click on them rather, and it'll automatically start the QSO process, and and It'll show like, so this KX8X, that guy, I've already worked that guy, I've worked that grid square. So you can see like if they're not highlighted, like I need EL88 apparently, so I could highlight one of these guys or click on them. They all have really good signal reports. So I could very easily make that grid, uh, grid square and uh, have one more on the map. Next, we have a program that anyone that's into parks on the air or summits on the air is gonna wanna download. This is called Hammers. Hammers is designed to be a nice lightweight bit of software for the portable ham radio operator. It was designed specifically for parks on the air, but he's added a few new templates. There's a parks on the air, summits on the air, field day, and winter field day. And basically, uh, I'll just pick an old log. It's a, it's a quick, simple logging software. So here you can see, uh, this is way back, uh, back uh, a couple years ago, or maybe last year I did an activation in Florida for parks on the air. So here you can see all the contacts that I made. Okay, you can look at a QSO map based off of where you are in your park. You're gonna enter your information here, you know, your frequency power, uh, your park number, it'll fill in the grid square. And then you get this cool map to see where everybody is. There's a POTA spots page. This pulls information right from the parks on the air database. So if you're hooked up to the internet, it'll pull this information. You can sort it by mode, by band. Maybe you just wanna work 20 meters. Uh, and the cool thing about this, like say I hear this K5, KI5WS, I can just hit copy. It'll automatically populate their information into here. For some reason, his operator name's not going. Let's try this guy there. So KA9JDE stroke seven, Brad's in Arizona at park K4431. If we work them, we hit save, and then they would get entered down into the uh, log here. It's just an absolutely fantastic bit of kit. Uh, it's available actually for like every kind of software, uh, Mac, Windows, Linux, iOS, uh, Google, whatever their thing is. Just absolutely fantastic bit of kit for anyone who's into portable ham radio. Next is my absolute favorite logging software that I've used on Mac and I've tried just about all of them. It's called Rumlog NG and it's absolutely free and it is absolutely amazing. 
And this is what it looks like. You can you can con kind of configure this however you want. This is the layout that I like to have. But you have all these multiple different windows. Uh, this is the main logging software here. So uh, let's say I work W8ZZU in Michigan. I can hit tab. It'll pull his information. I've got this cool interactive map that'll show where I am, where he is on the map. Uh, maybe let's say IK4GRO in Italy. See, it shows you where he is all the way over there. It's just absolutely amazing. Uh, here's some solar terrestrial data. Here is uh, the gray line map, the DX cluster. The cool thing about this, there is this, there is rig control with this. So here's an Italian station. Let's say I hear him. We can click on, double click that. It automatically populates over here, changes the frequency in the log. It just changed the frequency on my uh, radio. Just I am so absolutely in love with this program and it's absolutely free. It's absolutely amazing. I don't have anything bad to say about it at all. It's got all of your logbook of the world features, EQSL, uh, all kinds of different places that it'll automatically upload and download from uh, things like logbook of the world or, or uh, it doesn't have QRZ integration, but it, it's just... <laughs> I, I am so in love with this program. <laughs> it is ridiculous. So that's Rumlog NG. Lastly, I want to give an honorable mention to a program called TQSL because you just have to have this for any kind of uploading to Logbook of the World. I've been very vocal about my hatred for how horrible Logbook of the World integration is. It's a necessary evil. This is TQSL. You can use it to uh, get your station location, your call sign certificates. Um, you can sign a log and upload it automatically to Logbook of the World. Basically, when I use this in when I use Rumlog NG, I upload to Logbook of the World. It needs this program to it, it opens this automatically and then sends the information to logbook of the world so more a necessary evil but it does exist in the mac uh, universe next i want to show you six ios apps that i use on my iphone all the time the first one's really handy for if you're just say like i do sitting on my front porch playing radio all the time you hear a call sign you want to see who the heck is that guy qrz call sign search right here just a really quick way to look them up. Say you hear a station, say you hear K8MRD, and you type them in, say, oh, that's Mike in uh, Huntsville, Texas. He's an extra, it's a vanity call sign. There's the email. You can get the grid square, all that stuff. You can hit uh, the photo button, like there's my profile picture for QRZ. You can go uh, to the actual QRZ webpage. You can hit, uh, I don't know what all this stuff is, but there's my bio page there. Just a, just a quick thing. To have, I really use nothing more than just this page right here just to see who someone is or where they're at, but really need to have to have on your phone. Next, one that I use a lot, especially when I'm traveling, is uh, an app called Repeater Book. This is going to show you all the repeaters based off of your geographic location. So I'm in Huntsville, Texas, pulls up this Huntsville repeater, uh, which is one mile away from my house. You can click on it. It'll show you the, the receive frequency, the transmit frequency, the offset, uh, the tone, all that stuff. You can also just search. Uh, so let's say WA5AIR is a big repeater network here in South Texas. So here's all of the WA5AIR repeaters around uh, so maybe I'm going to Bryan, Texas, about 45 minutes west of me. I can say, okay, well, I can hit on the WA5AIR repeater there. And those are all linked around the whole Houston area from pretty much Galveston all the way up to uh, Bryan College Station, Huntsville, where I am. So really, really, really big footprint. So you can kind of always talk to the same, uh, same people. You never have to lose the QSO. But uh, yeah, repeater book, absolutely fantastic. If you're, if you're new, if you need... You know, what's that repeater's frequency? Oh, I forgot. Well, here it is. Go to repeater book. It's all right there. Next, a very important one, ham alert. Uh, any station you want to hear of, if, if they're spotted on the cluster and you want to get them in the log, download ham alert. And you can add triggers. I've done a video on this. Basically, you add triggers and say, okay, who? these are all the stations that I have in mind. So if any of these guys are picked up, 
on uh, a reverse beacon network or something, or if they're doing FT8 or whatever, it'll show up there and I'll get a little, it'll notify me on the app or it'll, you can send emails, you can specify how you want, but like here, N2PPI is doing a POTA. Wow, I should go try and work him. Uh, and on sideband, oddly enough. So it just shows you a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, very awesome app to have for getting that, that station, that, that elusive station that you've wanted to get in the log. This is the way to get notified. Next, we saw it on Mac, now we're gonna see it on iOS, hammers. Same exact kind of setup here, so here you can see some logs here. Now when I'm sitting out on my front porch, I use hammers a lot, I have this, I just call it porch sitting, and I set this up to be uh, to just the same as a POTA log. So I can go down here, I can see, okay, who are the POTA spots, let's turn QRT off, still get the same map, everything. So I use this to sit on my front porch and hunt POTA stations, and I'll log with this, and then periodically I will export this log uh, just by hitting export ADI. I can email it to myself. Oh, here, there's, there's Callum. Uh, and add that to my logging software. So hammers on iOS, absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's, it is $5 on iOS. The Mac version is free, but a small price to pay for. Uh, an absolutely amazing portable logging software. Another cool thing for uh, the antenna nerd in you, this ham ant cal at the bottom right. Open this up. This is just a really easy antenna calculator. So uh, you, you can do metric or um, the, the dumb one. And so let's say I want to make a dipole for 7.2 uh, megahertz. Calculate. It's going to show me well, a half wave is 19.81 meters, a quarter wave is 19.91 uh, meters. Here's a length calculator, so 7.2, calculate. It'll show you all the different lengths, so a full wave is 39.6 meters, uh, 5 eighths is 29.4, et cetera, et cetera. Quarter wave vertical, there's all the stuff you need to do to make the radiating element and the length of the radials notice those are different so just a really cool app to have on hand you know a lot of times uh when you're first starting out you might want to make a two meter uh dipole so you can do that one four six five two calculate that there's how you make it the 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 lengths of the antennas just just a great tool to have instead of sitting there and having to do the maths out by your by your hand and and uh you know have to think <laughs> ham ant cal makes it uh, a lot more enjoyable to do the maths. Lastly is an app I use anytime I'm doing antenna work or antenna tests out in the field, building antennas, it's called Antscope. It works in conjunction with Rig Expert Antenna Analyzers, and it is a bit buggy. There is a Mac version as well, and there's a reason I didn't cover it, because it's absolute hot garbage. The iOS one is, is fairly stable, so I, I do enjoy using it out in the field. And it's a really cool app. Uh, you basically just connect it over Bluetooth to your rig expert and you can go. So let's say I want to go to SWR chart and I want to sweep my antenna for 40 meters. You can set whatever parameters you want. Let's just do seven to 7,300. Hit done, start. This is going to sweep the entire band. And now here we can see my lowest SWR is 1.11 at 7.033. Uh, looks like I actually do need to shorten my antenna a little bit, but uh, just a great graphical interface. You can also take a look at the Smith chart if you want. There you have a look at that. Uh, you can also see all parameters, so you can see all this information, just everything you'd ever want to see about your antenna right on your phone. It's absolutely fantastic, and you know, for, for those older eyes, if you have a Rig Expert Stick Pro like I do, the screen's really tiny, so something like this will definitely help you uh, be able to see it a lot better. So there you have it. That's my list of favorite Mac and iOS apps. Hopefully you learned something, and I thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff 73, guys.